Merry Christmas and good morning. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Uh, you know, every year, just about every year, I think every year since I've been doing the podcast, I've read from Luke chapter 2 around, uh, around Christmas time. I uh, read about the virgin birth of our Messiah, um, and I'm going to do that again today. And, uh, you know, before I get into talking about Christmas, um, I want to share uh, a story with you, because I, th- I feel like, wanna, you know, we really need to be praying for our country and, and just for the world right now and, and for God's mercy and for peace. And, you know, I kind of brought that up on the, on Friday when I did the uh, Apocrypha reading. And, um, you know, there's lots of talk about war and things of that nature. Uh, here, give me a second. I'll just pull up a few headlines for you. Uh, that I just wanted to read the headlines. I don't want to spend a lot of time on news and stuff today, but, um, and just for the record, I am going to do the AI one. There's so much information about artificial technology coming through right now that, I mean, we need to have a podcast. We need to have a discussion about it. Let me just read you a few of the headlines dealing with North Korea, China, and all that. It says, the U.S. and China are preparing for all hell to break loose in North Korea. That's from businessinsider.com. Uh, U.S. preparing bloody nose attack on North Korea. Um, and I've been seeing this information uh, recently and hearing a lot about information, this information. Um, and, and the article, I'll just read you a little bit of it. It says, and this is from the New York Post, says the U.S. is preparing plans to deliver a bloody nose attack against North Korea to knock out its nuclear weapons program. And it, it's this idea that a preemptive strike type of thing um, tons of headlines and stuff about this and I'm hearing this a, a lot on on news shows and, and things of that nature and so I just wanted to remind us I think we need to be praying for peace um, you know a lot of times I think these headlines and these things it's I think a lot of times it's it's creating a boogeyman or there's another agenda or the, you know things really could be that fragile and we really could be on the brink of war and so you know something I've just I've just been praying for the United States of America praying for the the world in general praying for peace um, you know, the scriptures say, woe to them who long for the day of the Lord. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, in time YouTube teachers and, and pastors, and they just get so excited. You know, ooh, you know, they hear that Damascus is burning to the ground, and they're, and they're like all fired up and excited about it. And I'm like, do you not know that people are suffering? Human beings are suffering. Children are suffering. Christians are suffering. Why are you so excited? You know, woe to them who long for the day of the Lord. You clearly don't understand. And even if your doctrine is right, and I don't think it is, but let's just pretend for a second that the, that there's a pre-trib rapture, and that everybody's going to be whipped away uh, who who's a Christian, it's still a selfish thought, I think. To be like, ooh, man, you know, oh, great, people are suffering over there. That means I'm going to get to get out of here soon. Like, I don't know. It just rubs me the wrong way, and I'm just kind of agitated by it. And, uh, you know, I'm not really interested in getting into the rapture doctrine uh, or even just debating it or discussing it. I'm just making a point that we should be praying for peace. We should be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are suffering at the hands of, of, of terror and of all, all kinds of evil and have, at war and there's famine and there's starvation and there's a lot of bad things going on around the world. And we need to be remembering them and praying for peace uh, and not getting all excited and gleeful about terrible events taking place. And uh, so I just, wanted, I just wanted to say that, you know, things are fragile and things could change overnight it could be tomorrow that war starts and then everything changes folks 
and in and we may very well be approaching the last days you know that's something that i've believed for a long time and that's one of the reasons i even started doing this podcast is because i you know you know i started off just doing news i wanted to have a news show um and just do my own thing it was actually called the sean osmond show for those of you who remember uh, I did a, a precious metals economy show for a company called Silvertown before I started this, and then started Sean Osmond Show, which was all news and and you know the and you know sticking it to the man type of uh, type of show. And then I just felt like God was telling me, warn people, trouble's coming. Warn people, they need salvation. They need Christ. The time is short. I'm not saying that that's what God said to me. I'm saying that's what I felt like was where I was being led. And so, even more so today, several years later, we are even closer now than we were then. And so, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and I just ask that you take the time to seek His face, to fall on your knees, repent of your sins, because there's darkness is eventually going to fall. And at that point, it may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. The scriptures say today is the day of salvation. Before I read Luke chapter 2 and we read about the birth of Christ, I want to read to you from Philippians chapter 2. You know, I want to do a better job on this show of, of, of showing people the Savior. Because none of this matters. <laughs> none of this matters if you don't know Jesus. Let me start with verse 5. Just let me read a few verses here. F verses 5 through 12. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to, unto death, even death on a cross. You see, Jesus, he humbled himself. He came to earth in the form of a little baby. Then he went to a cross and bled and died for your sins, for my sins, and the sins of the whole world. That whoever should believe upon his name will not die, but inherit eternal life. Now, you'll die a physical death, but you won't die a spiritual death. Verse 9 says, Wherefore God hath ex highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name. Whose name is above every name? Verse 10, That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my brethren, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. My friends, this is, this is a very serious moment. Very serious it's very serious that you understand that salvation is not something that happens because you went to church on Sunday. You know, a lot of people pile in churches on Christmas. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to the Christmas service for the church that I go to this morning, and it'll be packed wall to wall. There's so many people that maybe they show up just on Christmas and Easter, or they, they show up on Sunday, but they don't really have a relationship with the Savior. And so I'm just asking you, before we get into you know, reading about the birth of Christ, to just rem to make sure that you know the Savior. Are you in an intimate relationship with him? Has your life been changed and altered? Are you a new creation in Christ? Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, because it's serious. So, my prayer is for peace, and my prayer is that everyone who listens to this show, who's on the other end of this show, would know the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Christmas story. Luke chapter 2, I read this every year, and look, you know, last year I did a podcast and I explained all the pagan origins of, of 
you know, it's, you know, of Christmas. And it is true that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Um, well, the truth is, is we don't know when he's born. People have some theories, but the scriptures don't tell us. And the scriptures are the only information that I care about, not somebody's theory. And uh, so we don't know when, when Christ was born. Um, and there was some pagan origins for Christmas. You know, there was some Babylonian pagan stuff uh, before. And then there was some Roman pagan stuff. And then Constantine kind of blended that with Christianity. And so there, that definitely does exist. But here's the thing, guys. You know, how many people in the world know about Christ, know that he had a virgin birth because of Christmas? I mean, I want you to think about this. Think about how many people are going to hear about the name Jesus Christ today and tomorrow. How many people might, be, might fall on their faces and be saved? You know, there's never a bad time to celebrate the birth of our Savior and to remember that that event took place. I mean, if you think about Hanukkah as an example, you know, the Jews celebrate Hanukkah. Nobody seems to have a problem with that especially within the Hebrew Roots Movement. And that's not a holiday commanded to observe in the Bible. But it's a memorial, it's a, and it's, it's, a, it's so they can remember when God did something for them. And, and likewise, the greatest gift ever given to mankind is when God gave His only begotten Son, that whoever should believe on Him should be saved. And so I have no problem with going to church today and singing Silent Night and O Holy Night and, and falling on my knees before the Lord and, and thanking God for what He did and then blessing my friends and family with gifts to remember the greatest gift ever given. If you've got a problem with it, you don't want to do it, that's fine. I don't really care either way. But stop trying to clobber your brothers and sisters. I'm so sick, of, and I'm, and I'm going to be coming out against this on every podcast I'm doing in the future if I have to. I'm not going to tolerate any more. It's not going to happen on my channel. It's not going to happen in my comments, and it's not going to happen on my website where people claim to be Christians, and then they come around, and all they're trying to do is clobber and take the legs out from underneath their fellow brothers and sisters. They're trying to pull little specks of dust out of everybody's eyes when they've got planks hanging out of their own lie, out of their own eyes. They're without love. They're without joy in the Lord. So we're not going to tolerate anymore. You don't like Christmas? Don't celebrate it. That's my thing to you. You know, there's there's not a single day on the calendar, guys, where we can't find an ancient, you know, pagan holiday. You know, so whether we whether we whether we do this on December 25th or January 3rd, it really doesn't matter because it's all about the heart. You know, so many people are just full, you know, you know they're, they're always learning, never coming to the full knowledge of the truth. And here's the thing, your knowledge about ancient roots of December 25th that you read about on Wikipedia, you heard from some talking head, you don't even know for, a, for you know, most people think they know things, but they only know because of a Wikipedia article or because of, another talking head on YouTube, they haven't actually looked at historical documents. They haven't actually read the church fathers. They haven't actually, you know what I mean? They, their knowledge is actually very limited, but they think that they're, that they've got all this knowledge. And so I just want to say your knowledge about December 25th and it's, it's, it's origins and all of that is, is completely worthless compared to being the hands and feet of Messiah. Why don't you try being the hands and feet of Jesus why don't you try blessing people? Why don't you take this season as an opportunity to show people Christ? I mean, it's worthless compared to, your knowledge is worthless compared to feeding and clothing the hungry. This is a great time to take care of people who are freezing, who are cold, and to be able to say, Merry Christmas, God loves you, Jesus loves you, here's a jacket. What good is your religion and your knowledge without love is my point. It's of no use. It's like salt that has lost its saltiness. It's not even good for the dung pile. It's not even good for that. And there's going to be many people, you know, I think, that stand before Christ on Judgment Day and talk about all their great religious accomplishments. They'll say to the Lord, I observed the new moons. I observed the feast. I didn't, you know, and the Sabbath. I never ate pork. I didn't pick up sticks on the Sabbath day. I didn't dare put a pagan Christmas tree in my house in the month of December. And I wonder if the Lord's going to respond to so many of them with, with, with what is written in the Gospel of Matthew. 
And he says, Then I shall say to them who are on my left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. I was naked, and you clothed me not. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me not. And they will answer to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and a thirst and a stranger or naked and sick and in prison, and we did not minister unto thee? And then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and as much as you did it not for one of the least of these, you did it not to me. So many people are so caught up in being religious. They're not loving their brothers and sisters in Christ. They're not taking care of the poor. They're not doing any of the things that Jesus commanded them to do. But by God, they didn't celebrate Christmas, so <laughs> I think I've made my point. Let's read from Luke. Let's read about the birth of Christ. Let's celebrate the greatest gift ever given to mankind. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Crinerius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. I hope that uh, all of you guys have a Merry Christmas. And I uh, hope, uh, hope that you all know Jesus, you know, the greatest gift ever given. And uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, friends. Take it very, very seriously. Maybe you're new to the podcast. Take it very, very seriously. Your relationship with God is everything. It's everything. And troubling times are upon us. And they're just getting more and more troubling every day and every day. And you need to know the Savior before it's too late. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And until next time, God bless.